Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Shark here with another 1v1 on Fame and Villa approach for you today. Playing as allies, we have Red Wings using the Brits, uh, going the Indian Artillery Battle Group. He's ranked number 31. And then opposite him is Kaysak from Denmark using Wehrmacht. He'll roll with the Luftwaffe Battle Group. He's ranked number 11 overall. Um, guess what? Maybe there'll be a 17 pounder in this one. Maybe there won't. Either way, I'll be super happy. All right, that's it. On to the match. And here we are on Famonville. We got Red Wings here in blue on the east side of the map, top of the screen. Getting a second sapper out. And then opposite him in red is Kaysak. Uh He's getting a second Pioneer and then getting his uh, infantry company out. And it looks like Red Wings is going to go for a third sapper. So very similarly build, build as we saw to Orange Pest last week. Um, so he hasn't locked in... The armor actually doesn't even have armor available. So I'm interested in seeing how he uses uh, these sappers, if we see a kind of a similar concept. You know, uh, Kaosak getting grenadiers out. And he also has not locked in a battle group. Oh, I say that. There he goes. Luftwaffe. Fallstrom Pioneers unlocked, uh, but obviously he's still got to wait on the manpower to bring them in here. So I've been putting a little time into Famineville lately um, in 1v1s. It's really interesting how, like, the bases are so close to each other vertically that this center area can can kind of suck you in. Um, and if, you're, if your opponent is good, they can almost base lock you or at least force you to constantly fight just to leave your base. Uh, so machine gun's pretty powerful here. Uh, and, and Red Wings... Getting a Vickers out, so we'll see how he employs that. From a resources point of view, this map is slightly heavy on munitions. We'll see how that influences the gameplay. So Vickers hits the field. KSAT getting a second Grenadier squad out now. And the pioneers here are just going to kind of skirt the sappers. The Stens do no damage at range. Negren's happy to plink away in green cover here. The sappers, man, no, no damage coming in. There it is. One model drops. Elsewhere, sappers getting good map control uh, on the north side of the map. I wonder if he knows these guys aren't capping. My guess is probably not. Vickers moves up. And the Vickers, in addition to suppression, does a ton of damage. And so Red Wings getting the second Vickers out and now going for a section command post. So uh, basically waited to build that tier one building until he had five units out. It's an interesting approach, and I think it actually helps because at 150 manpower to build a section command post, you put that towards getting units out early. Oh man, these pioneers are still in range of the Vickers. Uh, and so he has the opportunity to get just a slight advantage uh, here in overall force composition. ksx has got a third Grenadier squad out, and now he's going for the tier one officer's quarters. Um, Grens try to pin the sapper squad here. Another one's coming to reinforce. Dropping a couple of models, and they're, the fire's focused. Down to a single model. They're going to... Somehow they retreat through the hedgerow, and they get away. And now this sapper squad going to town on these grenadiers. Won't drop any more models, though. They're going to advance here. You know, on the opposite side of that, the double vickers force away the pioneers. Wow, the sappers, that reinforcing squad of sappers pushes off the Grenadiers, and now Kaysak on the back foot, right? So he's not going to have any fuel income here shortly. He's responding by getting a mortar out to deal with the Vickers. Meanwhile, Red Wings going straight for the platoon command post. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, and he's going to lock in the Indian Artillery Battle Group and the 120mm mortar. Oh, the sapper squad in danger. Just depending on RNG. 
And the Grins whiff all their shots, so that Sapper squad's gonna get away. Vickers, this weird, like, <laughs> inverse ambush setup to suppress these pioneers. One Vickers uh, team forced to retreat by the mortar here. And Kaysak gonna start to work his way out of his base, recapping the fuel, grabbing the center VP. So didn't experience a ton of bleed there. KD is about even, actually slightly in KSX favor. And VP is, he's, he's only down to 430 or so. So that fuel income, it doesn't bode well, uh, that shortage there. But at least now he's recovering that map control. Oh, and that's what Redrens is saving for, is that heavy mortar. You're going to start to see the Vickers considering moving back out of base here. I'm a little confused by this, but... Oh, and so now the 15 CWT is getting transitioned to the Polston. Okay. Little area denial weapon. Um, I don't know, he, you know, KSAC hasn't given away that he's Luftwaffe, but if he can keep that Polston alive, it'll help quite a bit when the inevitable Luftwaffe loiter shows up. Now KSAC going for the Panzer Grenadier Company. Oh. Right, Polston is out. I don't know what the mortar, I guess, targeting the machine guns in the base sector. The big mortar remains in the Brit base sector. It'll be able, because of this map, it'll be able to range a fair portion of the map. Olsen does a bunch of damage, but doesn't drop any of the grand. Sappers force the second squad out. Sappers over here will be able to force these pioneers away. Now here comes the Vickers. These Grens, nice use of the sandbags to create green cover here. Oh, heavy mortar starts to come in on the uh, Granat Verifier team. Oh man. That Vickers may go down here. And now Red Wing's getting a field infirmary out. I, it makes a lot of sense because he, he turned this 15 CDBCT into a Polston, right? So now he still needs healing. He's not going to have be able to use it as a med truck. But getting the field infirmary. He's going for the Valor upgrade as opposed to the uh, the War Cry. Man, this Vickers team just getting bullied by Grenz in the screen cover. Olsen, I guess, attack round through the hedgerow. Okay, Sack, double Pios against the Sappers. Man, the Sappers, look at that damage. The first Pioneer team just starts to melt. And this one also going to have to retreat. On the opposite side, Grenadier's force off the Sapper squad. Pack 40 moon up to try to tangle with the Polson, but unable to find it. Mortar barrage coming in. Oh, the heavy mortar. And and they barely get out of there in time. The KSI doing a good job counter capping this fuel. Right, so both players contesting the other's kind of secondary fuel here. That was unusual little two-shot burst there. The Polson going to back up. Looks like we're going to see a Stummel here. Yeah, he's already got the Stummel conversion on the way. Grenz continue to cap up this fuel. Oh. The Sapper squad hits a mine on retreat and gets knocked out. So good pickup there uh, for Kaosak. I like the Stummel here to augment the mortar to deal with some of these team weapons. No six pounders out yet for Red Wings. He's unlocked the Gurkhas. And the first squad is going to come on the, on the field here. Back 40 setup. Oh, whiffs the first shot on the Polson. Polson wisely goes into hold fire. Now here. Nice little barrage from the Schimmel on that Vickers team. So they're forced back. 
and just look, I mean, now Red Wings capping this side, KSI cap. So they're just constant back and forth. Neither player really letting that fluster them. Oh, uh, using the Granat Vet for veterans ability to get a mortar over here. And get a little bit better vision for the pack 40. Sapper is going to try to hold uh, this fuel point here, but the Grens will eventually be able to bleed him out. And actually, if they're not careful, they may go down. They retreat. Oh, the 120 does a ton of damage to the Stummel. Yurk is upgraded with Brens. And they'll be able to just kind of push through this. Trying to force off the pack 40. And while the Polson on the opposite flank could get fousted here by this Gren squad. And KSX unlocked the uh, LG 40. Oh, yep. So Polson engine critted. Vickers comes up to support, so Red Wings will be able to hold on to his fuel. The squad of Panzer Grenadiers out now for KSX. And now he can manage to get them in close. They should do fairly well. Definitely against team weapons, but even against the, the Gurkhas with the Brens. Pioneers do an aggressive job capping on the flanks. The, uh, oh, he's Panzer Grenadiers. Somehow. The Vickers team, oh, they hit a mine. Nice placement. Honestly, probably saved them from uh, losing a vehicle to it later. The Vickers team will get away. And now KSX got a triple cap on. Getting that tier three uh, officer's quarters up now as well. And he's got a lot of command points that he's saving up. Potentially for the, the look for the manpower cheats there. Sappers wire off this green cover. Really smart. They're going to decap the fuel and then immediately bounce away. Yurk has hit another mine. KSAC mine placement's been really good this match. Olsen sliding over to cover. The Pac-40 is also moving this way. Gren's pushing the Vickers over on uh, Red Wings fuel here. Now Sapper is closing as well. Oh, this Polson's in danger. Pack is re rotating. One shot comes in. Yeah, Polson's going to keep moving. And uh, KSAC unable to maintain sight for another shot. Both players floating considerable resources. Either one could go for tier four now. And that's what Red Wings is going to do with the company command post. Dirk is on the flank, forced away by the Stummel and Pioneers. Oh, man. Over here, Vickers team's beating up on these Grenadiers. And both Grenadiers retreat. So Red Wing's going to hold on to his fuel for now. But KSX's taken really good control of this southern side of the map. Uh, especially with the Stummel up here. And still no hard AT out for Red Wings. The biggest thing that he needs, KSAC needs a sight. He's getting his tier 4 out now, too. The mortar is back in HQ. I guess he has no healing up here. I, he's got his grenadiers, but no in base healing. Now, Shummel doing a lot of damage to this uh, Vickers, but not knocking out any models. There we go. Oof. Two go down. Gurkhas move up. Gonna, uh, the Grens hit the Vet 1 ability. So they're just gonna do a ton of damage. Here's the Pulsar on the flank. Oh, it immediately has to back up before it can start shooting thanks to the Pack 40 placement. Well done here. And the Grens able, P Grens able to just hold this position in heavy cover. Meanwhile, Sappers trying to, oh my gosh, these Pioneers could go down. Oh, annihilated. That 120 just does so much chunk damage. Okay, this act gonna counter cap on the north side here. He's got only one Vickers seem to worry about. Red Wings floating a ton of manpower. And I wonder what the approach is gonna be here. I almost feel like with the infantry heavy play and with how wide this map is, a couple of crusaders might be the way to go. Oh, 120 mortar is cleared in base. Good use of the granat bear for there. So it looks like it's going to be a Matilda for X wings, or Red wings, X wings. We're losing a fuel point to enemy action. And 
now Star Trooper coming out. Ooh, Schnummel hits a mine, engine critted, but there's nothing nearby to follow up. And Pioneers, right here, will be able to repair. Yeah, KSX gotten the infantry reserves out. Oh, that 120. Gotta be careful. Oh, RN Jesus is uh, looking out for KSX here, so he, no 120 rounds hit the Schnummel. It's going to get out alive. Matilda hits the field. KSAC, uh not going to get the triple cap, but fantastic fuel control at this point. This will probably be the last tank Red Wings gets for the next five minutes or so. He's got to make this Matilda work. And I think with the speed of it, he's basically got to pick a portion of the map to focus on. He's got to, getting a six pounder out now. Stoss Troop and moving up. They're a good counter. To the uh, Gurkha Brens. Bren Gurkhas. Bren Gurkhas, probably. Alright, so now KSX getting his med bunker up in the HQ. Sappers closed with the Grenadiers. Vickers in support. Oh, nice toss to the grenade. And now the Grenadiers forced to retreat. Matilda moving up to challenge these P-Grens. Takes a pack 40 round for its trouble. Oh. Royal Engineers knocked out by the Pioneers? Probably with some help from this uh, Granat Fairfer. So two Sapper squads down now for Red Wings. Pack 40 now camouflaged in the middle of the map. Six pounder is just kind of hanging out. He's going to move up and, and take the center. Oh, those sappers almost go down as well while repairing. Oh, man. They're not ready for a late retreat by the Vickers. But going to get away. Matilda. Oh, nice mine. Hands are going to do immediately retreat. Matilda picks up another model. Well, Vickers is on the flank getting harassed by the Schummel. They'll have to retreat. Look at all these mines. Mines everywhere. You love to see it. Oh, this Vickers setting up for some reason. KSAC trying to decide what to build. He starts with a P4 and then switches it for a Boom Bear. I think that makes sense. Um, especially with the Matilda. Right? It's going to move really slow. So you can get another Pack 40 out to zone it out and then continue to press with your infantry. Room Bear would be great at clearing some of these uh, team weapons that Red Wings has. Oh, Six Pounder gets a, a shot off. Schummel's going to be able to get away. Over here. Oh, Gurkha's find a mine. Man, that Pack 40. Oh, the MP40s on the crew start shooting even though it's in ambush mode. So they lose their ambush bonus to fire at some Gurkhas. Stoss Troop and trying to frontally clear this Vickers. And they almost succeed. Now the Brum Bear is on the way out. That will have no problem. What? It's on hold fire? Huh. Finally he turns it off. Uh, used the Granat Bear for flares here in the middle. And the Brum Bear is going to push all the way up. Six pounder not in a position thanks to the buildings and the uh, the blockers there. But now KSAC gonna wrap back onto these Gurkhas. They have to retreat. It's a lot of pressure. Matilda out of position, armor facing the wrong way. Takes a shot at the Brum Bear. Schimmel could use the white phosphorus round. The pack 40 unfortunately is back in base, so Matilda has nothing to worry about right now. Oh, Vickers team gets knocked out. On retreat, they're trying to get back. Matilda plinking away at these grenadiers. Grenadiers and Stoss Troop are going to take the north north side of the map here. Six pounder gets another shot off from the Brumbear, but it bounces. 
Matilda has found the Star Troop in here. I think KSAC needs something else. He either needs another Pack 40 or he needs a P4. There you go. He's getting a Pack 40 out. Meanwhile, Red Wing's going to unlock Grants. <clears throat> and I don't know that KSAC has made it clear. Oh, this Pack 40 just rolling right up onto these Gurkhas. Oh no, that's unfortunate. That's about to get cleared between the Vickers and the Gurkha. Yeah, there he goes. Decrude. Here comes the bundle grenade. And the six pounder are going to focus on. Now the Luftwaffe is straight coming. This is the first indicator that he's chosen Luftwaffe as a commander. Six pounder is still trying to knock out the pack 40. Rum bear. Oh man, those Gurkhas barely get away. Grens come out in support. Gumal off on the side. So Red Wing's starting to slowly kind of claw back some of this map control. He's down 155 VPs. But I think, especially with the Matilda and his team weapon heavy approach, he's got to own the middle of the map. Oh. Matilda bounces a pack 40 round. Here's the Vickers. Oh man, at the Brumbear. But it doesn't shoot. Heavy mortars coming in. A couple Grens go down. Taking a lot of health damage. Both players able to get another tank out now. I wonder if this is... Yep, there we go. We'll see the first Grant for Red Wings. Yes, that getting another Pioneer out. Oh, he lost his Pioneer squad, so he needs... The pioneers just to repair this broom bear and keep it moving. You know, Stoss and Grens capping up the north side, trying to keep the VP pressure on. But Red Wing's going to actually take VP uh, advantage here shortly uh, with two of the three. The Sappers have uh, unlocked Minesweeper, which. With how many mines KSAC's been laying down, or was anyway, uh, pretty helpful. Grant hits the field. Pack 40 gets a hit in on the Matilda. Stummel on the flank, forcing away the Vickers. So the combination of the Stummel and the Stoss troop in here will probably be able to hold that northern VP. Oh, Grant's pushing with the, uh, the Gurkhas, putting a lot of pressure on the Pack 40. Oh, Grant gets fausted, but not critted. Back 40 gets another good penetration. And the Grant forced to back up for repairs. Now it looks like the Matilda is going to rotate over to the north side with these Vickers. Red Wing's going from the Arbored Vehicle Training. And he's also unlocked the, the 5.5 Howitzer. I don't know if he's just filling out the battle group or if he intends to actually build one of them. With the, it feels like it'd be overkill with the 120 already on the field. And Matilda has found the Stummel. Oh. And he's able to get a second shot off before the White Phosphorus round hits. Stummel cleared. That's a good pickup for Red Wings. Oh, yeah. This Vicar is forced to retreat. The Stoss Troop in, in the building. Bundle Grenade kills two models here from this Vickers, but the Pegrans are forced off. Isaac, he's got his half of the map, but Red Wings has the has VP bleed on him now. Now, fortunately for uh, for Kaysak, that Polson was knocked out, so he doesn't have to worry about uh, anti-air once this loiter comes in. He's got the munitions for it. I'm sure he's waiting for the right moment. He's got a second Brumbear coming. Yeah, so Red Wings, thanks to the Minesweeper, finds this mine here. Sappers look like they're going to go try to clear it. Six Pounder and Grant able to chip away a little bit at the Brumbear. The second Brumbear hits the field. And for some reason, the mine, it's disabled. There we go. Now they're sweeping the mine. He clears it out. Oh, the airburst barrage coming in. 
Aimed at the pack 40. Does a fair amount of damage to the uh, Scott's Troopin as well. Uh, pack 40 gets a couple of good hits in. Oh, those sappers may go down. Double Brumbear moving up. The six pounder can get a couple of shots off. It's actually going to use the in place ability. Oh man, but it's taking damage from mortars and two rum bears. That round clears it. Double Vicar is able to push back the Grenadiers, but the pack 40 moving behind these rum bears forces the Grant back as well. They knock out that six pounder. Oh man, Airburst Barrage plus Vickers annihilate a Gren squad here in the center. And the pack 40 forced to back up. He's got a second one on the way. Stoss Troopin challenging uh, these Gurkhas here. And a Brumbear. Yep. Nice shot. Brumbear forces the Gurkhas off. And so just like that, the timing, second Brumbear hits the field, able to force off, uh, force Red Wings back. And Red Wings on the back foot now. He's getting a 17-pounder. So could be yet another game where we see a 17-pounder in the middle of the map uh, on Feynmanville. Let's see if he has better luck with it than Orange Pest did. And it's such an expensive investment in 1v1s. Right, Sack has Red Wings on the VP bleed again. Grant back at full health. The Matilda, double that Matilda being refitted. Rennings has the fuel for another Grant. I assume that's going to be the plan. Get a second Grant and get a 17 pounder. Grant chipping away at these Grenadiers. Stoss trooping on the, the flank here, working on the Vickers. Oh man. These team weapons just at the mercy of these Brum Bears. 17 pounder on the way out being built now. The double pack 40s. A, a pretty good counter for the Grant, unless the Grant can get on the flank. And using the ambush camouflage, get that first strike bonus. Ooh. I think it's a guess with the airburst barrage. Just a little bit off. Oh, not that one. Pack 40 crew takes a ton of damage. And this Gren and Mortar may eat a couple of those airburst shells. Rumbear pushes up, finds the Grant. Supported by two pack 40s. He's trying to lure the Grant into this ambush. But Red Wings doesn't take the bait. Instead, he's going to cap up this north side. Grenadier is coming out to challenge, but the Vickers in the building will be able to hold that. Gurkha's moving in. All right, and now we see 17 pounder getting established. First shot. Boom. Big hit on the Brumbear. Oh. One Vickers crew cleared by the Brumbear. Nice penetration onto the Brumbear by the 17 pounder. Wow, those grenades just do not do the damage on the, the pack 40 that the Gurkhas want. Another airburst barrage coming in from the 120. Pioneer smoked. Now the second Grant hits the field. Meanwhile, P4 getting built for Kayasak. He's going to need to build some more pioneers again to repair these uh, these vehicles. And Red Wings smartly picking up the 17 pounder, moving it forward a little bit. Oh, the two Grants find a Grenadier squad. If they're not careful. Fortunately, their retreat path takes them around the site blocker. Panzer IV on the flank of these Grenadiers. The Grants somehow whiff all their shots and look like they're not going to be able to pick up these Grants. They could grab this Brumbear. Oh, there's the Grenadier squad. Oh, man. If they just kept pushing, they could have knocked out that Brumbear as well. Now Panzer Grenadier is getting whittled down on retreat. And so Red Wing's going to back his Grants out. I guess he's worried about these Pack 40s. Um, I don't know if he saw the Panzer IV yet or not. Is that getting a second uh, Pioneer squad out to help manage these repairs. Uh, this truck, he's gone for the med upgrade, which makes sense because it will still allow him to tow the 17-pounder. So he's going to pick it up and move it again. 
I think, you know, in a 1v1, to keep it alive, you got to constantly move it around so you can't get caught uh, by artillery or mortar barrages. And it looks like KSI, he's content with his control over the south. It looks like he's going to send a big force over here. A big flank to the north. 17-pounder, not necessarily out of position, but not really able to help with this engagement. And KSX got the strafe, uh, the loiter as well, to help if he needs it. Now, there's a mine here. It'd be unfortunate if one of the vehicles hits that. Oh, Vickers is just going to immediately depart the building. Panzer 4 goes to chase. He's going to hit this mine. The engine critted. Good thing he's got those two pioneers out. And here come the Grants, but they run into a little Pac-40 ambush here. The second one takes a shot attack ground through the hedgerow uh, does not hit. The 120 responds with an airburst barrage. So the Pac-40 is forced to relocate and Red Wings, I like this. He sees the big push here on the north side immediately countercapping to the south. He continues to own the center between the 17-pounder and the Grant. And now with uh, foot guards on the field as well. It's hard to tell how this is going to go. Red Wings is behind on total VPs, but right now has got the drain on KSAC. And his army composition looks pretty dangerous at the moment. Oh, 17 pounder gets a nice hit off on this Brumbear. The rest of KSX force is kind of out of position. But now, the big flank coming in. Oh. Man. Oh, no. The Panzer Grenadiers go down to the mine. I thought it said disabled. I wonder. I got to go back and look at what set that off. Maybe it was a Gammon Bomb? Now the Luftwaffe Loiter comes in. Foot guards take a bunch of damage, as does the 17-pounder uh, getting towed by the CWT truck. And just like that, KSAC is taken over the middle. Two Grants, even as they get kind of pushed out, getting really pushed by the straight. Here, here comes the Loiter again for another burst. Oh, one Grant gets knocked out. Oh, man. And the Brumbear knocks out of Vickers. 17 pounder getting set up in base. There's not much Red Wings can do with this loiter up. Oh, Airburst Barrage knocks out one of the pack 40s. So I take it back. You know what you're doing. The Red Wings still under VP pressure, and now the loiter coming back in, focusing on the foot guards. Strafing run does a little bit of damage there. Rumbear's getting repaired by these pioneers under the cover of the uh, the Luftwaffe. And just just one Grant remaining. He's got enough fuel for two more. He just needs the manpower, but that loiter contributes quite a bit to some manpower bleed. Oh, holy cow. Will that Gurk at one Gurk <laughs> try to get away? 17 pounder is set up. No, it's not. It's just hanging out. There it goes. Now it sets up. Big hit on the P4. Second Grant on the way. Wow, look at that shot. Grant's thinking about pushing. The Pack 40 is in support. Oh man, the 37 mil on the top bounces and the 75 mil misses. So that P4 will get away. Oh no, Pack 40 knocks out the Grant. A, uh, another one about to hit the field, but that does not look good for Red Wings. Now he's got, he'll be able to flip the VP pressure here shortly, the foot guards and the Gurkhas. But from an army composition point of view, this is not looking great. A 17 pounder unsupported can't really stand up to this Axis armor. It can force them back and zone out part of the map. Another Grant hits the field just as a, a second P4 hits the field for KSAC. Now, Red Wings moving up with the Gurkhas here, trying to get this triple cap on. 17 pounder is set up. Now, KSI, he's sending one P4 to the south side uh, to support these Grenadiers to try to take control of the middle of the, or that side of the map, not the middle. I realize this, I mean, he just has to own VPs at this point. He doesn't need to knock Red Wings all the way out. 17 pounder. Takes a big shot at one of the rumbers. Oh, good second penetration there. 
So Brumber's gonna move away to challenge the uh, the Grant and the Foot Guards. 17 pounder not in a spot to do a whole lot about the Brumbear. And KSAC able to relieve the VP pressure a little bit. Looks like he's gonna get this cap off here. Gurk is in this building doing a lot of work, but the Panzer IV is gonna be able to chip away at them. 17 pounder getting picked up again. So the Grens capped the VP, the Gurkhas winning the engagement still. You gotta imagine eventually they'll be forced to retreat. Oh, Brumbear just behind the sight blocker. The Gurkhas finally do retreat. The Austrian coming up to the middle. Oh no, these sappers. 120 lands almost directly on the Brumbear, but doesn't really do much. And now a Kettenkrod for KSAC, probably just to help manage VP pressure. Oh no, 15 CWT takes a hit from the pack 40. 17 pounder is going to set up. Gurk is challenging the Stoss. Both squads retreat. 17 pounder hit comes into the Brumbear. Oh, pack 40 just eats an airburst round. But I think this might be it. KSAC's about to get the triple cap on here. Kettenkrod supported by a P4. A P4 on each one of the flank BPs. I mean, I like the approach. Makes sense. Oh, Kettenkrod might get smoked by the Grant here. Yeah, it does. But it does decap the point. Oh, no. The Grant at risk of going down. And Panzer IV knocks it out. Now the Loiter coming in. Targeting the 17-pounder. It sets up. It's 15 CWT knocked out. Oh, man. And that 17-pounder knocked out as well. Foot guards, their will shattered by double Brumbrand. <laughs> and I think this is going to do it for Red Wings here. Foot guards forced back. Oh, man. And I think the Brumber Bear is going to hammer this one home. We see the GG. And that's going to be it. Okay, so starting with KSAC's build order, uh, he goes double pioneer start into infantry company and three grenadiers, pretty standard. Um, he selects a Luftwaffe battle group here, but he doesn't really use much of it until he gets the uh, Luftwaffe infantry reserves a little bit later. So interested why he chose it at this point in the match. But he does immediately upgrade the tier one officer's quarters. Then he ends up getting out a Granatwerfer team once he realizes he's up against two Vickers. Really smart. His mortar play throughout the game is just outstanding. From there, he goes tier three, starts with a pack 40. You got to be worried about the Brits rolling out with a, a Humber or a Stuart relatively early. Um, so I think that was part of the concern there. Then he builds a Stummel and then he gets a Panzer Grenadier squad. Uh, then he upgrades the tier three officer's quarters. Super helpful just across the board. The only real vet, you see him use the, the pack 40 ambush and then he uses the Panzer Grenadier vet one ability a little bit as well. I didn't see the white phosphorus round on the Stummel. I think he was trying to use it to fend off the Matilda there at the end before it died, uh, but it didn't really didn't really work for him. From there, at this point, he's had good map control and good fuel control, so he gets his tier four out, replaces some lost pioneers. Engineer units just did not fare well uh, in this game. From there, he goes Stoss Troopin, um, which I think makes sense. It's a, got a little bit more range than the Panzer Grenadiers, and like as this map opens up and it goes on, Stoss Troopin are a good choice. Uh, finally gets his med bunker up. Ideally, you see this a little bit sooner, but he was flush on fuel and low on manpower, um, so it makes sense. From there, he's basically going to do two Brumbears and two Panzer IVs uh, with some additional support units, Pioneers, Kettenkrod, and Pack 40 coming out. Uh, starting with the two Brumbears, right, to deal with the team weapons, the AT guns, and then once the Brit tanks hit the field, a couple of P4s to kind of, for that multi-role approach. Um, the Kettenkrod at the end is interesting, right? He's just trying to keep the VP pressure on. I like the thought. It gets knocked out uh, by Grant. Uh, and then he finally does get the Tier 4 officer's quarters up towards the end of the game. From a battle group perspective, like I said, um, his main focus of the Luftwaffe battle group, it appears, is getting that infantry reserves at manpower hack. Um, then he unlocks a strafing run. He uses that once, and it kind of gives away that he's using Luftwaffe. Um, you'd almost like to see him like hold on and wait until he hits that, that loiter button. 
but he does use the the skill planes a couple of times and to great effect and we'll talk about that a little bit later on and now rolling through red wings build order here starts with the triple sapper the same as orange pest from last week then he rolls into the double vickers hmg and so what i like about this i mentioned it during the cast but because he's building all of his tier zero units he doesn't actually he can get more units out on the field faster because he's saving that 150 manpower that it costs to build the section command post then he goes section command post platoon command post immediately um and i think this is deliberate because he knows he's going indian artillery he's no he knows he's getting the the 120 mortar out it comes with the 15 cwt but he can't upgrade the 15 cwt without the platoon command post so to make that as useful as possible he builds that command post, calls it onto the field, and then he immediately upgrades it into the Polston. At this point, he definitely needs the infirmary for the healing because he chose Polston, right? He doesn't have the forward healing from the uh, med truck. Gets a couple of Gurkha rifles out, uh, which is an interesting choice. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about later. Uh, from there, he goes company command post, gets a Matilda 2 out. I think this is, in my opinion, this is a little bit of the mistake. I think the Crusaders, a couple of Crusaders would be better on this map swing them around, you cover your flanks. They still do damage to infantry, but you can avoid some of the uh, the team weapons that the Vermont get. And then you get on the flanks of the Brumbears and just kind of harass. They're not as chonky, um, but I, yeah, and I think you see he recognizes that later because he, he re refits the Matilda to get more grants out. Uh, gets a six pounder, unlocks grants, gets his first grant, gets the armored vehicle training, which is I think is a good choice because he's floating some fuel. Um, then he unlocks a 17 pounder, um, which like, I love to see that attempt at the play, but man, it's such a huge investment. Um, gets a second grant cause he refits the Matilda when he gets the 17 pounder out. Then he goes for foot guards and then he's at this point, he's leaning on grants to kind of do it all for him. There was a, a spot where he was chasing down, he chased down that grand squad with the two grants. Um, and the rum bear really damaged in base. He might have been able to knock it out. It's just one of those things where, like, we see it as as the cast or people watching the cast. He doesn't see it, and maybe if he did, this whole game turns out differently. Uh, from the battle group perspective, he goes for Valor, uh, the Gurkhas, and then the Volunteer Infantry. So he's also getting the 25% uh, reinforcement cost reduction. Um, and then on the opposite side, obviously, the Heavy Mortar, the Airburst Barrage, uh, and the 5.5-inch uh, Howitzer, which he does not use. All right, so in terms of general notes, I only have a couple. Um, first off, I love to see the 17 pounder, right? In 1v1s, it's really cheeky. Um, it is a huge resource investment, both unlocking it and then getting it out. There's a fair amount of fuel involved. And so I think um, it's difficult to make it pay off in solo games. In team games, it makes a lot more sense. Um, you can protect it a lot better. You're almost tied to it. Like once you get it on the field, you're basically committed now to the center. I mean, most places, you're, in most cases, you're going to keep it in the middle of the map, right? Um, and you're committed to supporting it. And especially when you don't have main lines, because he leaned on Gurkhas uh, and Sappers. So he doesn't have snares available. Um, it does a lot of damage, but like the micro, KSX micro on his Brumbears was just too good to avoid losing a vehicle or to end up losing a vehicle to the 17 pounder. And then when you talk about like the Granat Verfer advancing, the infantry clearing it, um, <clears throat> the Brum Bears being able to push it, it's not so much more resilient than the six pounders uh, that I think it really makes sense. I'd rather have two or three six pounders that you can array um, and you can start hitting these vehicles with salvos. Now, like, granted, the Brum Bear is going to bounce some of those shots from the front, but if you get it on the flank, you combine it with the Grants. Um, so I like the 17 pounder play. I love the sound. I I love, you know, the front penetration and the double damage. Like it's awesome. I just, I really think you're going to struggle to see that be the game breaking play that you're looking for. Um, the sappers into Gurkhas, I, I kind of hinted at this. Uh, you don't have snares from the Gurkhas. The Gurkhas arrive late enough that I think that it ends up being kind of an even fight between the Gurkhas and the Stoss and the Panzer Grenadiers. Um, and then with the Brum Bears on the field, they end up just bleeding a lot. Uh, and so I think there's probably, um, I got to compare the DPS, but I think if you had like three or four infantry sections and they also had the Brens, you'd probably do okay. You'd bleed a little bit less manpower. Um, 
you'd still be able to hang in there against everything but the Stoss Troopin. Uh, and then you get the infantry training and they just start to burn stuff down. That might have been something he could have done as well, is unlocking the infantry training to help improve kind of the, the fire rate um, and the resilience of, of the Gurkhas. But the received accuracy doesn't really help when you've got Brumbears kind of annihilating you. Um, and then the Brumbear, I just want to highlight, the Brumbear plus Pack 40 is a super powerful combination. Uh, now that the 8 rod is not really available, um, I think it's just not meta. Uh, the Brumbears do really well. You kind of saw the power, you think like, oh man, do you really want a second Brumbear? Like you need some anti-vehicle. Man, especially against the Brits, because they, with the exception of the Archer, they don't have like that tank destroyer role. So anything that is going to hit hard at anti-tank capacity, um, the, the six pounders or 17 pounder, you can easily clear with a Brumbear. When you have two of them, it's just kind of nasty. Plus the pack 40s are more than enough to penetrate and push off the Brit armor. So that combination makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and then again, just generally for Feynmanville, like you're really seeing how the shape of the map is kind of dictating the, the nature of the game. The the mines from KSAC were awesome. They were kind of everywhere. Um, but they make it really like the map is so wide. So those mines mess with your ability to flank, mess with your ability to harass. Um, and your sweepers can't be everywhere, right? And it's such a wide map that even if you have a sweeper squad out there, it's you're going to end up finding mines with vehicles trying to flank or with infantry squads. So I think mines are really, uh, if you can, if you've got the munitions, if you've got the micro, to lay mines on the flank pass here, really, really effective. Also, indirect, super powerful, right? Both sides had mortars, did a lot of work. It's just such a shallow map that the mortar doesn't really have to come out of your base, but you can start to zone out the center, especially the, the Vermont Granatwerfer with the, the flares at Vet 1. Super powerful spot and for AT guns, uh, planning your next move, etc. And then the last thing, because the map's so shallow, the loiters uh, are just so powerful, right? Like you can, and you saw this happen a couple times, that loiter basically shoved Red Wings back into his base. And then he has nowhere to really go because as soon as he tries to leave, he's getting hit. And the Luftwaffe loiter is even more uh, kind of exploitative because um, it, it attacks infantry, it attacks vehicles, and it does so both effectively. So. So that's really it. That's all I had for notes on this one. Um, honestly, pretty awesome game. Really good back and forth. Uh, really thought Red Wings was going to pull it out there and had a couple things. Uh, KSAC with his micro was able to swing a couple things his way. So uh, well played to both guys. And uh, thanks. We'll see y'all in the next one.